Hey everybody, looking to study for the CISP exam? Not sure where to jump in? There's so much material you gotta cover and it can be overwhelming. Well, in this episode, I'm gonna guide you through it. We're gonna take a look at domain one, security and risk management. We've got a lot of work to do and three questions waiting for us that we gotta answer. Let's go get to work. Hello everybody, my name's Adam Gordon, edutainer here at IT Pro TV. In this series, we're gonna be taking a look at all sorts of things you need to know about the CISSP CBK, common body of knowledge to make you successful on the CISSP exam. We're gonna be taking a look at domain one, security and risk management in this episode. And as you can see on the screen, there's all sorts of topics associated with domain one, 12 of them as a matter of fact. We're gonna be focusing in on this episode on 1.9 risk management concepts. And specifically within risk management concepts, we're gonna take a look at the NIST RMF, the NIST Risk Management Framework, put a spotlight on it, tell you all about it. As we do in all of these episodes, we're gonna answer three specific questions to help you be successful as you study for the CISSP exam. What is, in this case, the NIST RMF? Why is it important for you to know about it? And more broadly, what kind of information do we have to link this concept to in other areas of the CBK? And finally, how can you study this material effectively? I'm always gonna have a sample review question in hand for you. I'm gonna take a look at how to answer it correctly. So I'll show you the methodology associated with breaking it down so you understand how to deal with it when you see it on the exam. So the NIST RMF, one of the most important things we could talk about with regards to security and risk management in domain one is the ideas that the RMF brings together for us. You see on the light board here, just to my right, the RMF laid out. Remember, this is going to be a process that runs clockwise for us, but let's make sure we understand exactly what the flow looks like here and understand as we get started with this, that the goal of the RMF first and foremost is to help us understand how to integrate the thought processes around risk management, mitigation of risk, identification, control, and management into the SDLC, how we build security and risk management in at every phase of the SDLC. So we wanna see this concept stand on its own in domain one, but link this to domain eight, where we talk about software development security, all very important. All right, so we always begin at the beginning. Prepare is our first step in the RMF. And by the way, as a little exam tip for you, pro tip, it should be the first step in almost every process we engage in. We should always think, ready, aim, fire. Aim is prepare, not ready, fire, aim, where we do not prepare, and as a result, we're taking action without really understanding what we're doing. We're gonna move out of the prepare phase or step up into our cyclical flow. We're gonna move to categorize, which will be step two of the RMF process overall, seven steps overall, step one, prepare, two, three, four, five, six, and of course, seven as we go around. And we're gonna move this flow, and we're gonna see it kind of, and I'll just put the arrows in while we're talking, we're gonna see it become an iterative flow that cycles clockwise for us and allows us to understand how all of these phases, these steps are gonna come together. We hand off from each of the steps moving as we go. As we prepare, we should be thinking about the steps involved with getting ready to take action. Are we organized? Have we understood the goals of the RMF? Do we understand our organization? Do we know the structure? The thought process behind this is, we're essentially saying is, hey, let's make sure we understand the operational landscape. Let's make sure we know the players. Let's identify everybody and everything. And then as we get ready to start acting, specifically in categorize, where we examine individual systems, understanding their importance to the business and assessing them through a business impact analysis or a business impact assessment. You hear BIA determined or defined either way, but we're gonna engage in the process of a BIA and you should equate the concept of a BIA with step number two. Categorizing the system means we have to measure and understand what goes on with it, establish our time values we're gonna to use to measure things like maximum tolerable downtime, things like our RTO and RPO values, recovery time, recovery point objective, and our work recovery time overall. All of that is derived as we categorize the system. From there, we're gonna move into selecting controls. The output of the BIA, in other words, should be our ability to zero in on these systems, understand them, put them into the context of the operational environment, see how important they are, and then 
apply the appropriate control or controls. Remember, controls are also synonymous with terms like countermeasures and safeguards when we think about these and potentially see vocabulary about these elements on the exam. And so we're going to select both control categories and types. We want to make sure we understand that. Think about the three categories of controls, administrative, technical, logical, and physical, and the seven different types of controls we can choose from and understand all of those and think about the right combinations. We then in step four are gonna go ahead and implement those controls, put them into practice, attach them to one or more systems, and then begin to understand how they are operating. We need to begin to understand that but really, as we move out of implement, we're gonna measure that effectiveness formally in our fifth step or fifth phase where we assess the controls. Right down here at the six o'clock position, let's understand quantifiably and qualitatively how they are behaving. Are they doing the things they need to do? And are we understanding that? We'll then authorize our system. We'll go ahead and seek formal acceptance of management of the system and operation of it from senior management. And by doing so, the acceptance of the risk associated with that system's operation. And then we'll have ongoing monitoring of our controls in step number seven to allow us to understand how effective they are over time, over the life cycle, the actual operational span of that system in our environment. And then finally, as necessary, we'll rinse and repeat. We'll prepare, we'll categorize, and we'll run through that process as often as necessary. So we wanna make sure we understand the flow here, helping us to answer two very important questions, two of the three that we're dealing with in each of these episodes. Why is it important to understand this concept for the CISSP exam? In this case, it's important to understand the RMF because we need to understand how to manage and identify risk, but as I suggested, linking it to domain eight where we talk about the SDLC, is gonna be an important gotcha. And you wanna make sure you pick up on that. That's the why. When we think about the what, well, we're talking about the concepts of the NIST RMF. We're talking about how to put them into perspective within our operational environment. And we're seeing the steps involved with doing that. We've laid them out. We're gonna take a look at how we could actually see this appear on the exam. That's our third major question we always try to answer. I'm gonna have a review question, a sample review question we're gonna take apart, look at. It's gonna be related to the concept of the RMF. I'm gonna show you how to answer it correctly and also how to break down the methodology associated with getting it right on the exam. Hey everybody, we're back. So we're about to tackle the how. How do we put this knowledge into practice on the exam? Well, I have one of my trusted review questions. We're gonna take it apart, take a look at the key things you need to pull out of this to understand how to identify this kind of a question answer it correctly on the exam if asked, and of course, we'll show you the right answer along the way. Now keep in mind, these are sample review questions. These are not gonna be representative of the kind of questions you're gonna see on the exam word for word, but the concepts, the ideas, and the methodologies are really what you're after here, not the specifics of the question. All right, you've been warned, as we say. So let's take a look at the question. You are the on-staff CISSP for Risky Business Inc. Senior management, very important keyword. Senior management means we're gonna focus in on a group of decision makers in the organization that have the power and the ability to make the kinds of decisions that the NIST RMF is designed to help us to address. This is our target audience and these are the people that can make the decisions that out of the RMF, the business is looking to understand and ultimately implement. So it's an important idea for you to pick up on in this first sentence, the fact that this is our target audience. Whatever we're doing is gonna center around the senior management. So senior management is meeting to prepare for an upcoming annual external audit. Make a mental note, may or may not be an important piece of information. We'll see as we continue reading, but we've got an audit coming up. It's gonna be driven by an external entity from the business, an impartial uh, organization hired by the business to be brought in to audit the information, the data, the assets, the controls, the systems, all, and a variety of things that we are often focused on. So it's good to pick up on that, one of the three types of audits that can be performed. Remember, by the way, we talk about audits in domain six, security assessment and testing, important for you to pick up on that. And has asked you to help them understand, them being senior management, the following statement from the auditors. Okay, so the auditors have said something as part of the preparation for this upcoming activity, the external audit. Senior management is not clear and they're seeking guidance from you, the CISSP. Put on your thinking and CISSP hat. Remember, we think like a risk manager, 
We're not necessarily going to be in technical problem solving mode here. We may or may not need to bring out our technical problem solving skills, but let's hold off on that. Let's make sure we know what the appropriate approach is and the degree that we need to engage before we decide how to approach answering the question. The statement is as follows, in quotes, a business impact analysis, the BIA, should be performed during the blank phase of the NIST RMF. Okay, well, we know exactly what the question is targeted at now. NIST RMF, I'm thinking in my mind, hey, there's steps, there's phases. Adam said something about knowing them and knowing them in order. And if I remember correctly, little hint for you, there are seven of them. I should be flashing in my mind what those steps are, what they are in order. I know, I think, if I remember correctly, I start with prepare and I wind up ending right at the very end with continuous monitoring. Okay, so I know I've got a flow and I've got to figure out that flow to answer this question correctly. So the NIST RMF, while the output should be consumed during the blank phase. So I've got essentially a fill in the blank, but we don't really deal with it as a fill in the blank. We deal with it as what are the terms in the right order that have to be put into that statement so you can answer this question correctly. And we've got four answer options. Each of them is an answer pair. And it's important to pick up on the fact, although it's not stated in the question, that it's not just about understanding that the right answer needs to be selected, but that the right answer in the right order needs to be selected because these two statements are gonna indicate that there's phases involved and we gotta make sure the right phase answer is in the first and the right phase answer is in the second spot as we seek to find the right answer here. So a lot of things we gotta juggle, kinda of bring together, manage all at once and think through. Now the trick to this question is very straightforward. This is a relatively simple question, although it may look a little confusing on the surface before you read it more than once. You've just gotta know the steps of the RMF. If you know them, and you know them in order, you know, as I suggested, we start with prepare. Well, let's fill in the blank, right? A business impact analysis should be performed during the prepare phase. Well, we don't deal with doing a business impact analysis in the prepare phase. We can easily eliminate item number one. It's wrong, let's move on. Item A, I should say, let's move on. Don't go back, don't be worried, don't second guess, and don't agonize. If you find one of these two statements is wrong, boom, we're done and we move on. What about implementing and categorizing? Item B, well, are we gonna perform the BIA during the implementation phase? If I remember correctly, implementation is all about putting those controls into operation, right? So we're not gonna do the BIA before we actually do that or after that. We do that before, which means if we have to do the BIA before we can figure out what controls we need and ultimately implement them, then B can't be right either is the first answer. Boom, we're done. And we would walk through each one of these and come to C, categorize and select, or D, assess and authorize. Now, the right answer here is going to be C, right? Categorize and select. If you remember our discussions over at the light board, we talked about each of these phases. We have to categorize, and categorize is phase number two, where step number two comes directly up at the 12 o'clock position right after we come out of our prepare phase. That is where we do the BIA. Even make note of that on the light board. I even wrote it right above, categorize, as we looked at the steps. So that should be a trigger for you. The BIA takes place in step two. We then follow that automatically and immediately with the output being handed to the select phase where we select our controls or countermeasures and then ultimately move through the rest of the NIST RMF process. We break down a review question to really show you how to apply this knowledge that we talked about. And we have to do this across the entire CISSP CBK in order to study and be prepared and ultimately take and pass the CISSP exam successfully. So keep in mind, while this is one small piece of a much bigger puzzle, I go through the entire puzzle for you over at IT Pro TV. You can join me over there at any time on demand, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year, because it's really a lot of fun to hang out with me, but I have an accelerated CISSP course for the CISSP 2021 CBK. Latest information totally aligned with CBK and ready to go for you as you want to engage in learning all about the steps necessary, not only to master the CISSP CBK, but to be successful when you sit for, take, and ultimately pass the CISSP exam. Until I see you over at IT Pro TV watching me and or until you come back and hang out with me for another focus episode on how to be successful on the CISSP exam, I'm going to wish you happy CISSP and I'll see you soon.